Remember back in your childhood, in elementary school, when your teacher would read a story to you about a faraway place that would let your imagination run wild, or about a historical figure and things that they had done or accomplished, feats that you could hardly imagine. Remember stories about Christopher Columbus and his discovery of the New World? And remember how he convinced Ferdinand and Isabella that the earth was not flat, and he had to convince the people that the earth was actually a sphere and was not flat, and had many, many reasons that he could prove this. He convinced them that this would not be a sign that you would see as you went off into the sunset across the Atlantic, and that the earth would look like this as we know it today. That's the story that we heard as children, but what if everything you think you know is actually wrong? What if the books in the history that we were taught isn't really what happened? You see, the story about Columbus's voyages and Columbus's discovery of a spherical world were actually the work of Washington Irving, the American author in the 1800s. Washington's book, The Life and Voyages of Christopher Columbus, which was published in 1828, propelled this myth in the popular U.S. culture, and Irving claimed that the book was a carefully researched historical document. It was basically a romantic novel with Columbus as the hero, complete with completely fictional accounts of Columbus's proving that the earth was round. Are you surprised at this? Well, you've just experienced something that we could call conceptual change. Conceptual change is about challenging your prior knowledge with information that contradicts the things that you thought you knew. And according to theory, there is conceptual knowledge is dependent on a few things. One of them is assimilation. Assimilation is when you have new information come to you, how does it work with the things that you find important? How does it work with things that are important to your motivations, your intentions, your expectations, and your needs. In other words, you'll ask yourself, is this stuff that I want to know, or why do I need to know this? This is material that's relevant to you. The story about Columbus. Perhaps that was relevant to you, because it was a story that you've heard in your lifetime. On the other hand, besides assimilation, along with this, is accommodation. And conceptual change with accommodation is a, a, a bit of a conflict here where accommodation says that instruction is solely based on logic and scientific findings. It's kind of an old school teaching. And accommodation is based on the logic and scientific findings that are primary to student engagement. So it says that you will learn this because you'll find it, in, you'll find it uh, the scientific findings necessary to your being and that that will be the drive is learning and not necessarily your personal interests or individualities that will uh, drive your quest for knowledge. Also involved with this is motivation and we've got two different types here. We've got the intrinsic type and extrinsic and as you can see here intrinsic are things that are more about yourself, about the things that you would like for yourself inside, things that you'd like to learn and feel. Extrinsic goals are money, power, winning, things that others can see. So we want to look at the intrinsic part. And again, we want to go back to our, our terminology about assimilation. What interests me? This would be something that would trigger your intrinsic motivation. Lessons and material that is geared toward your intrinsic motivation and assimilation is going to be generally have more engagement and result in deeper learning or deeper understanding. Accommodation, on the other hand, is learning because you kind of have to. I am extreme, extrin <laughs> extrinsically motivated to get a good grade in this guy's class or to not get hit with that stick. Now, on the other hand, we've got some other information about that we've read about reputation 
text and new information. This is about information that is not counterintuitive, but it's assimilated with prior knowledge, or it's information that is counterintuitive, and it will either be rejected outright, it'll be memorized and disconnected from prior knowledge. Sounds a little bit like standardized testing there. And the last one, it might be used to reconstruct one's view on a topic. So in other words, you may have thought you knew, and this goes back to what we talked with conceptual change, you are willing to take on the new ideas that you've heard and let go of your old ones. So this is what we're looking for, is something that is like this. When we talk about this, there's three different parts to refutation and new information. First is the misconception. And let's go back to what I started with, the misconception that Columbus convinced Ferdinand and Isabel that the world was a sphere. It's what we were all taught as kids. That's the book, the textbook story that we got. The refutation cue is going to be that idea is a myth that was created by Washington Irving. And it's going to be followed up with this statement that the concept of the Earth being a sphere as opposed to flat, being flat, dated way back, 2,000 years or more before Columbus ever thought of sailing the ocean blue in 1492. Now, how does this pr impact professionally uh, for me? First off, I want to challenge instructors' prior knowledge about how they present their material with research-based ideas for how they can do better. Secondly, I want to encourage instructors to consider students' intrinsic goals and motivations. Be more of the first example of assimilation and a little less of the accommodation. Because in the end, we want the students to have a deeper understanding and to be engaged in the material and the, and the knowledge that they're, that they're getting. Also, I'd like to provide evidence and support to instructors about the need to assess students' prior learning and develop instruction that aligns with what they know. In other words, do you know that the things that you're starting your class off with are things that they're ready for? Have they had exposure to certain skills or certain ideas or topics that are going to prepare them to take your class? So I think it's important that we assess that. And then I also want to encourage instructors to challenge the students with new ideas. And this is about personal growth. This is how we evolve as a society and how we, we, we continue to, to grow and come up with new ideas rather than just teach the same thing over and over generation after generation. It's really one of the most important things that we can do in education is to challenge old ideas with, with new. And lastly, I've got a quote that I think kind of sums up one of the philosophies that I have in, in all of the instructional design topics that we've talked about so far in this class. And this is something that I, I try and drive home to instructors about making sure that the students are doing the learning and how this can work in with assimilation and intrinsic motivation.